Hi, this is uh, David, and I'm going to continue on in relating the placental topology to the section that the pathologist looks at. So, um, we discussed in the last lecture the ramifying villi with, that are bounded on their outside, whereas there are syncytio and cytotrophoblastic layers that sort of form the fetal component of the placenta that's sort of seen here. And that sort of the negative space, which I'm sort of going to shade in in yellow, the negative space is sort of the maternal blood space where the inflow comes from the spiral arterial and the outflow goes out through the veins, both within the decidua basalis. So when a pathologist looks at sections of the placenta, um, you could imagine that this is the placenta, this is the umbilical cord, and I'm just trying to show the depth here, the radially branching um, vessels on the chorionic plate of the placenta and this is sort of an attempt to show depth and imagine what the pathologist will do is slice through the placenta slice through um, perpendicular to the plane of the fetal surface and create these sort of wedges and you can imagine one wedge will actually include the umbilical cord and if you could just imagine picking up and taking one of these wedges out, you get a, a, a structure that looks like this. And sort of here, the fetal surface, this will be the chorionic plate, and this will be the lateral aspect of the placenta. The membranes would reflect up from here, but they don't, they're usually not seen in continuity. And this will be the maternal surface of the placenta, or the deep aspect. And, you know, this, even the wedge will have a certain amount of thickness to it, depending on how thick, you know, one has taken their perpendicular sections. And then basically you take, a, a, um, in, in reality, a finer scalpel and take an on fast section to show the fetal surface all the way down to maternal surface, and this is what's called a full thickness slice of the placenta. And this is embedded for histological processing. In reality, sometimes this specimen is too large to fit into a single cassette, so you could submit it as a fetal surface half specimen and a maternal surface half, so two corresponding halves that then complete a full thickness section of the placenta. But one way or the other, you should see the fetal surface at the top and the maternal surface at the bottom, and it's really a two-dimensional section. And it's a two-dimensional representation that really is a representation of this scheme, what I just sort of highlighted in orange. But reality is never as geometric as the theoretical representation. So what you actually see histologically, if you look, for example, at low power, for example, at say 2x to 4x, what you'll see is this will be the chorionic plate. And you might actually be lucky and see the umbilical cord in continuity, but often you don't. And then you won't see the vessels sort of going, you won't see the vessels longitudinally very well. You'll usually see like an oblique section and even some cross sections because of tangentiality and because of the radial course of the vessels. And you'll see art arteries and veins, and of course these are fetal arteries and veins, and they're the first order branches of the umbilical vessel. So, for example, an umbilical vessel comes in and gives rise to this and gives rise to this. And this could be a vein that drains back. And these are the vessels running through the chorionic plate. And this is what the histology really sees. This is what the pathologist sees under her microscope. And this layer right here, what you'll see here are amniocytes. And they're right here are amniocytes. And these amniocytes are exactly identical to the amniocytes that you see, for example, in a section of the fetal membranes and the amniocytes lining the umbilical cord. And here you see connective tissue around these vessels. And to be frank, half the time you can't tell if these vessels are arteries or veins because the extent of muscularization just doesn't allow great distinction. And then at the bottom aspect of the chorionic plate, you will see extra villus trophoblast cells, so EVT, as, or chorion cells. And you're probably picking up that that's sort of a cell that I like. And it's not so much that I like them. I think understanding the reflection of the chorion is fundamental to understanding the topology of the placenta. And then you start to see the villi. And because of obliqueness and tangentiality and orientation, you won't really appreciate the full 
fractal geometry, the bifurcation and the bifurcation into bifurcation, then all the order branching. It would be too much to ask to, to get a perfect plane like that. Life is much more organic. And so you'll catch maybe a stem villus in, in, in relief here, and then maybe an intermediate villus here, and maybe a distal or terminal, uh, same thing, a distal or slash terminal exchange villus. You'll see a few of them, of them here. And so what you see is sort of this you know, these sort of clusters and clumps of these, you know, sort of lobular shapes that represent various tangents of the branching structure. So this will be, for example, let's say a primary villus, and then you'll, in this section, you might catch it bifurcating. Here you might catch another one bifurcating, and then you'll catch some of the, what it's given rise to distally, some intermediate villi, and then you'll see some terminal, some terminal villi and the gas exchange occurs here and that'll be at around 2x and 4x and if you look at this your terminal villus under high power so let's say 20 to 40x magnification so you might see an adjacent if you're lucky you'll get an adjacent anchor stem villus and it'll have running within its wall a larger vessel such as an artery or a vein and then when you see here you know, just you, you, you won't see the continuity necessarily because of the tangentiality, but here it's given rise to, although you don't see the giving rise part in the plane of section, it's given rise to this terminal villus. And at this point, it's no longer arteries, what you're here up to are capillaries. And because they're capillaries, you're now at a level where you get gas exchange. And this will be the maternal space. So too this, for example, in my lower power is my maternal space. And so really what you have in here are maternal red blood cells. And here you have your maternal red blood cells, here's your maternal space, and they're going to exchange with the fetal red blood cells that are in the fetal capillaries. And often actually, the, the truth is that the fetal capillaries lie often very, very close to the surface to facilitate exchange. And so what you have is your capillaries, in your terminal villus, you'll have some stroma, and the stroma may have some macrophages that we call Hofbauer cells. And the outer delimitation of the terminal villi, just as the outer limitation of the, of the primary villi, of the distributing um, stem villi and intermediate villi, the outer delimitation of the villi is your syncytiocytotrophoblastic layer. And so your syncytiotrophoblast has fused with your cytotrophoblast and, and formed a single layer. But what's curious in the terminal villi is that the nuclei of the cytotrophoblast tend really to bunch up. They tend to bunch up, especially the more mature the placenta, the more they'll do it, and they'll form these clusters. And the reason is, is that allows the cytoplasm here to go really thin. So the nuclei thicken here in a very focal area, but for most of the area, the cytoplasm of, of the syncytiocytotrophoblastic layer is very thin. It's sort of like a tube of toothpaste where you squeezed all the toothpaste, all the nuclei to one part, and then everything else is thin. And you can imagine why. It's to minimize the amount of space between the capillary and the maternal blood to allow for the least, the least amount of space that has to be intervened in order to, to really facilitate, you know, efficient gas exchange. And so, as we'll see later, one adaptation as a placenta is really trying to maximize the utilization of the oxygen is to really concentrate the, the nuclei of the syncytiocytotrophoblast, you know, really, really, and as they pile up and pile up and get really consolidated in a single area, thereby thinning out other areas, it forms these things that are called knots. And that's a feature of hypermaturity, because as the placenta runs out of space to grow, it really has to maximize what it has. And one of the ways it maximizes the, its capacity for exchange is forming these syncytiotrophoblastic knots. So with that, I'll end this module on relating the two-dimensional slide um, appearance with really the topology and the three-dimensional schema of, of, of the placental structure. Thank you very much.